got a minute yet. Who wants to lead it? Oh, I did it the very first time, but I would absolutely love to do it again. Absolutely. How does it go again? <laughs> I. What are you going to do that? I am. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, they were asking last night who was coming over as commissioner. Oh. Oh yeah, on January one. I'm trying to like said, yeah. first time no, on January. Yeah. Bad idea. I know about the election. You could have my own belief, but do you know? Oh yeah. All right, we got nine o'clock, guys. Let's call this meeting to order. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Honey David. Here. Craig Scott. Yeah, here. Mark Serbra. Present. Brad Newbecker. Ron Vaughn. Present. Item two, approval of the agenda. There is something I would like to change under item 15, uh, the closed session. Item two, the implementation of the county's payroll system. I would like to move that to item G and make claims item H. No close. No close. No, there is another close. There is a there is a, another subject underneath closed session. I'm good. I'm gonna that. make that motion. I need support on that. If support. If a motion with support, is there any discussion on that? Do we need a roll call on that? I just uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Is there any other? I'll move. I'll move to accept the agenda with change. Support. We have a motion from Commissioner Scott with support from Commissioner Vaughn to approve the agenda with the stated changes. Um, all in favor, say yes. Yes. Opposed. Motion carries. Item three: review of minutes. Three A, September twenty second, two thousand twenty two, regular meeting minutes. I was able to read the minutes <laughs> this morning. Good. And I'll make a motion to accept the minutes presented. Support. We have a motion, Commissioner Scott, with support from Commissioner Serbuk to approve the September 22nd, 2022 regular meeting minutes. Is there any discussion on that? All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries item 3B, October 6th, Committee of the Whole Meeting Minutes. Those minutes were delivered to me this morning. And I was <laughs> able to read those and I'll accept them as presented. Support. We have a motion from Commissioner Scott with support from Commissioner Vaughn um, to approve the October 6, 2022 Committee of the Whole Meeting Minutes. Is there any discussion on that? All in favor say yes. Yes. Opposed? Motion carries item four, public comment on agenda items only. This is agenda items only. State your name for the record. Speak only to the chairperson. Stand behind the podium when speaking. Limit comments to three minutes or fewer. And follow the direction of the chairperson when speaking. Is there any public comment in the, in the room? Any public comment on the phone? Item five, correspondence. We received correspondence from what go county Gibbick. is that? Go, go Gibbick. Go Gibbick <laughs> County related to auto insurance reform, Iron County related to election integrity, Iron County related to auto insurance form. Those have been um, received and filed. Item seven, new business. Or excuse me, item six, action on consent calendar. Is there any? That you guys are willing to uh, let's take them one by one. You're you're running at Pardon me? 30, you're running at 35 33 at a 45 speed right now, so we can take them one by one. What's that mean? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be able to know what a 33 record is and a 45 record. <laughs> I don't know either. Is there something you want? <laughs> are you able to follow? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Item seven resolution to approve the and purchase quote. I think we talked about this. Uh, the judge came to us in the committee of the whole. This is to purchase that 2022 Ford Transit Connect at a total cost not to exceed $33,694. Upon the completion of the purchase, the resolution authorizes a sale of 2007 Dodge Caravan at public auction. Motion to approve the resolution. Support. We have a motion from Commissioner Scott with support from Commissioner Serbuk to approve the resolution to purchase the van. Um, any discussion on that? 
This is for probate court in front of the court. Roll call vote. Ron Vaughn. Yes. Jenny David. Yes. Rick Serba. Yes. Mark Serbra. Yes. Item 7B, resolution to approve the patrol car authentication. This resolution was sponsored by Information Technology Director Tom Spencer, recent purchase and computer aid dispatch system. The CAD system by the 911 Emergency Dispatch Authority allows law enforcement personnel to access important information in real time from in-car computers. Oklahoma County purchases an annual subscription to property software that allows sheriff deputies to access dispatch information in the field. Approval of the resolution will allow police departments from the the city of Rose City and the city of West Branch to access CAD information through the county subscription. Make a motion to approve the resolutions presented. Right. We have a motion, Commissioner Serbo, with support from Commissioner Vaughn. Is there any discussion on that? Roll call vote. Jenny David. Yes. Frank Scott. Yes. Mark Serbo. Yes. And Vaughn. Item 7C resolution to approve the 2022 report of taxes to be portioned, portion, portioned pursuit to the General Property Tax Act. This resolution is sponsored by the Equalization, Equalization Director, Randy Booth, section 37 of the General Property Tax Act requires a county board of commissioners to hold an apportionment session and approve an apportionment report in October of each year. Approval of the resolution will provide final authorization for the levy of property taxes upon which taxing authorities depend to provide educational, health, economic development, public, safety and other services which are important to the well-being of the county and the economy in Oklahoma County residents. Motion to approve the resolution. We have a motion, Commissioner Serbuck. Support. Support from Commissioner Scott. Is there any discussion? You read it very well. Any further discussion? Thank you. Roll call vote. Ron Vaughn. Yes. Annie David. Yes. Frank Scott. Yes. Mark Serbuck. Yes. Item 7D, resolution to appoint a member to the Department of Human and Health Services. This is uh, sponsored by the Oklahoma County Department of Health and Human Services Board. Section 46 of the Social Welfare Act established a county social service board of three members, two of whom are appointed by the Board of Commissioners. The term of board members, Susan Hartz, will expire on October 31st, 2022. And Ms. Hartz has confirmed her desire, to, her desire for reappointment. Approval of the resolution will confirm reappointment of Ms. Hartz to a term ending on October 31st, 2025. Secretary, to approve the board. Motion from Commissioner Serbo with support from Commissioner Vaughn. Is there any, any discussion on that? This Sue's been a long time to work for DHHS her entire life. And she's very dedicated. She's currently the chair of the board. So she's very appropriate. She does desire to continue. So. Do a fantastic job. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Frank Scott. Yes. Frank Serbra. Yes. John Vaughn. Yes. Jenny David. Yes. Resolution to appoint a member to the Sable Valley Community Mental Health, <laughs> Health Authority Board, item 7E. This resolution is sponsored by Sable Valley Community Mental Health Authority. The Board of Commissioners approved an enabling resolution to create the Sable Valley Community Mental Health <clears throat> Authority pursuant to the Mental Health Code. The Sable Valley Community Mental Health seeks a appointment of a new board member to fill the term of a member who recently resigned. Approval of the resolution will confirm appointment of Commissioners Mark Serbuk to the Board of Directors for a term ending December 31st, 2022. I'll make that motion. Support. We have a motion with support from Commissioner Vaughn. Is there any further discussion? Commissioner Serbuk, you're willing and wanting yes, to? Yes, ma'am. Roll call vote. Mark Serbuk. Yes. Ron Vaughn? Yes. Penny David? Yes. Frank Scott? Yes. Item 7F, resolution to approve agreement for extension services. This resolution is sponsored by the Michigan State University Extension. It is a mission of MSU to help improve, to help people improve their lives through an educational process that applies knowledge to critical issues, needs, and opportunities. MSU Extension meets this mission by providing extension, extension educational programs in agricultural and agribusiness, children and youth development, including 4-H, health and nutrition, and community food and environment. Approval of the resolution will authorize an agreement with MSU Extension to provide services to Oklahoma County residents for fiscal year 2023 at a cost not to exceed $80,250.
motion to accept the resolution and support. We have a motion, Commissioner Vaughn, support Commissioner Serbuck. Is there any further discussion on this? Roll call vote. Ron Vaughn. Yes. Jenny David. Yes. Greg Scott. Yes. Serbuck. Yes. Item 7G, this is uh, the implementation of the county's payroll system. Oop. Yeah. Pardon me? I'm sorry. Go ahead. This is implementation of the county's payroll system that's going to be open for discussion. Um, how do you want to lead this discussion? I guess question issues, question what question was was uh, brought to us if all which I was under the understanding throughout this this uh, conversations that have occurred that all hourly employees were clocking in. Um, under further investigation, it sounds like that is not occurring. Right. Yeah. Well, under Sheriff, would you like to come up? Can you explain well, to us what is happening? I guess I didn't know there was a question. Yeah, what, right now, what is your department doing with the, we're talking about the hourly, not the salary employees um, of they your are, department? Yeah, so they are recording their hours. There is no clock in, clock out. So they go in and enter their hours that they want. Now, I, I guess the question is, is, is why when this is easily accessible, they can clock in from their phone, they can clock in from a, a, a neutral point, um, a time clock. We've made this very easily, unless there's something that we're not understanding. Why, why are they not doing that? When they are hourly employees. Correct. But when we set it up, some of the deputies and stuff do start from their house, the school right. resource officers, that type of thing. So they're not using the clock in, clock out. And with the shift work, that's, we just set it up to where it was easier for the employees at the sheriff's office to just enter their hours versus clocking in, clocking out. Well, I guess, why is that easier? Because we have people starting from home as primary. Um, how many see. people are driving cars? You have home. Your school resource officer and the canine officer. The canine officer's command officer. Correct. Yeah, other command officers He's driving still cars. Hourly, okay. Yeah, the sergeant's still. But the other command officers are driving too. Cars. Your detective does. The sheriff. Sheriff. Those are salary employees, though, correct? Sheriff is. Detective is hourly. So I, I guess what we've been trying to to manage for one is overtime. For two is the comp time, which there was a, a issue when our auditor came in and, and looked at the comp time. There is there is a, a few, I hate to say errors, but some things that she had found in the, in the couple that she did audit. So implementing this system was supposed to hopefully stop that. And it has with the comp time for sure. Okay. Time is, uh, now they've instituted a cap on it. So the comp time has been taken care of. The overtime, we're, we're trying to get that under control and just made a new hire. So we're hoping that moving forward, once we get bodies back and their different assignments, that they'll come under control. So, as right. As far as the clock in, clock out, the question is that's the way we set it up. It was just easier for us, the sheriff's office, to have the employees put in their hours versus clocking in, clocking out, depending on where they're starting. Why would that be easier? Why would that be easier than on your phone hitting whatever time you start and whatever time you stop? Why would that be easier? It just depends on what they're doing, what they're getting called out to. You know, if you have employees that are working from home, they wouldn't be able to do that coming from home. We just set it up across the board that they they enter their own hours. And then we verify that as supervisors that they fall into their shifts. We're making them put notes as far as overtime, if they have overtime or any type of thing so that we can verify what that overtime was for. Doesn't that make it harder? I, I mean, that sounds like that's a lot more time for you specifically. Now, don't get me wrong. There are a few special situations. Right. When someone comes in 15 minutes late at my office, they have to call the, the, the supervisor. Hey, I was 15 minutes late. This is why that happens, but very rarely. Um, I, I, I guess I still don't understand why that would be easier trying to remember what time you clocked in, what, what time you clocked out. I mean, I thought the system was to stop all of that. It's pretty standard for the deputies as far as start and end time. You know, working 12 hour shifts, so. We can adjust that 
Tom, am I am I am I wrong? It can be adjusted. I just heard Breck say what I wanted to say. I was waiting for you guys to get done, but there's a geo fence on that app too. You can't punch in from forwards downtown here. Out, you know, you have to be within a radius of these buildings to punch in. And we never had a time clock at the jail or the sheriff's office before. So when Nova time came about, we kept that same thing of no time clock. So Tom, let me let me just confirm this. You're saying that we can't expand that area where they can clock in? I do not know that. And I, I, know. I do know. That says I'm kind of setting you up. I can clock in from home. On your phone? On my phone. And maybe that's by group. I don't know. Yeah. And I don't have admin access to the system, so I don't know that. I know I cannot punch in more than a block away from here. So I guess, why are we... So how do you do that, Tim? I mean, I mean you're, you're saying you can do it. Right. This doesn't make right. any sense it's, to me. Yeah, I, as I understand the system, and believe me, I'm no expert on the software, but it's a matter of any time you use the term, and I don't remember what it was, but we can assign groups and assign a radius where they can check in from. So if we wanted to say you know, radius of 30 miles, I mean, we could do that. Uh, I think mine's kind of unlimited. I suspect I could clock in from anywhere. And I don't need to clock in as a salary, but you know, I kind of do it just to mess with the system, I guess, if nothing else. <laughs> but um, this this can be done. So we could set up a, you know, a 50 mile radius or whatever we would need to do to encompass the entire county. Um, and, and but we all would I only do is download the app and you punch in. But we would only have to do that for a handful. You just said there's only very few taking their cars home. I agree with that. If they start from home, then yeah, they should have the ability to. If they're having to drive in to pick up their cars. They should be able to clock in just like these hourly employees do. Salary, I agree, shouldn't have to. Hourly, in my opinion, should have to clock in. I thought that was the whole uh, um, purpose of this system. Thoughts, commissioners? Commissioner Vaughn. Well, like you say, it, it's easy enough to do if they're driving in anyway. I, I know I worked in oil fields for years and we had to basically clock in to our phones or whatever and that but we were driving to the site anyway so that doesn't matter um i can see where the resource officers they're not coming this way that's a that's a lot of extra miles and and but if it can be set up it it's easy enough to do i mean it's a two-minute deal is and i don't see where the officers should have an issue with it you, don't. you said you verify it how do you how do you verify it do you talk we check the schedule to make sure they're in their rotation. If there's an extra day in there, you verify that they're filling a shift. And you look at the notes to see what the justification is. Is it complaint work? Is it you know, why there's overtime? So that's the verification process. So as you're reviewing each entry in the mm -hmm. employee's timesheet. So this is still, and I understand the profession and I respect that. So it's still basically an honor system. <laughs> They still have to document. I mean, I, I I can go a step further if they put a note in there. They're on a complaint. I can go and pull that log and see what complaint they were working on. Right, that sounds like a lot of extra steps. If I had, if I felt it was necessary for me to take it that far, if I felt the employee was taking liberty with overtime, I would have to go and do that. Mr. Scott. We've had the sheriff's office involved with this whole Nova time right from the get-go. There's been no secrets about why we put this in place and and the, and the sheriff's office has bought into this or told us they bought into this right from the get-go. We have union contracts because the employees want union contracts. We have to be fair across the board with all employees. If we require an employee to come into this building and punch in, one of the clerk's employees to come in and punch in when they get here to start work, that's when they start work here. And when they leave, they're done working, they punch out. What you're telling me is you can't verify if we allow uh, we allow somebody to punch in from home, then we can't verify that they're working for the county at the time they punch in. <clears throat> and that's why I don't really like what I'm hearing about. Now, I can understand an exception here and there, but not a whole department exception. 
I expect the employee to come to work and punch in and start work then. Uh, if you can confirm to me that an employee starts work when he punches in, you know, and he is done working when he punches out and not, if we're allowing this driving, driving any, be in any place, I mean, it's too easy. These, you know, police officers are people too, and people do things. And yeah, what are you? Are you? Are you? No, above I, the I, law, I, above the rule. I mean, really, we're gonna go there now? No, I, I, oh, no. I, I, we don't have to, but we're putting this in place for a reason, and. It was to know that the employee is working and we're paying for working time. And that we're treating everybody fairly. And we're trying to treat everybody across the board, from whatever department to whatever department, across the board. Mm -hmm. And again, so what you're from all the Because in the past, there wasn't fairness across the board. So, so we're, we're trying to correct. It's unfair that the sheriff's office is just putting their time in. I mean, well, we, we're putting a whole process in place here, and we've kept everybody on 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 task. I mean, every this has been explained every step of the way, and everybody's looking at us, giving us the New York nod. Yep, yep, I get it, I get it, I get it. And now it's in place, and it's not being used. I don't understand how the board wasn't aware of that. This is the way it was set up. We were clear about when we set it up during the NOVA time training that the sheriff's office was going to enter their own time. Who, who did you communicate that with? And during the training sessions, during the setup process. It was it was clear that that was the way we were going to be doing it. It's definitely not uh, the understanding I had. For us, I mean, was... I, I've done a lot of work with the NOVA time to get it up. And if, if this was an issue, it addressed it when it was being set up. I, I guess since you're not utilizing utilizing it, we are utilizing it. We're we're utilizing it to enter time. We're using it to track leave time, overtime. So you're going through individually and putting in all of this this information. Employee starts and, and there they either do it daily or by the week, and they put the hours that they work each day. So they're assigned twelve hour shifts. They put their twelve hours in. If they work an extra four hours for a complaint, they put another line with overtime. Who's so, going in and putting that information in the Nova system? Employees. So if they're here, so, so explain this to me. If they're here to get their patrol car to start duty, what is, why can they not clock in on their phone that's in their hand? They're in the parking lot. They're getting in their car. Why can they not hit start? I'm not saying they can't. I said, I, we set it up at the beginning. We were crystal clear that we were going to enter it because we had people that were in different places, started at different times. And when we set it up, when we were working with no time, we said, this is the way the sheriff's office is going to do it because there's a lot of flow and add. We have employees that start. Granted, it's not a whole lot of employees, but to say that we're not utilizing or we're not, I mean, if we want to go to where we're making the sheriff's office clock in, clock out, we can do that. We'll make that move. Who was part of the train? Were, were you part of that? Yeah, it was Tim, a whole group of us that were. So were you aware of this? Well, you'll recall, too, that it was communicated to the board back in April that you know, who sets the parameters for the elected offices, and this was the subject back in April. Uh, so, yeah, this is not news uh, per se, but the question then becomes, why are we sitting down and later on entering the data where if we're just punched, it's done? at the time. So were you aware that this was what they were doing? You know, I'm not aware of the logistics specifically of it. We did have an overall conversation about how the sheriff's office was going to do this, matching it with the scheduling that you were doing. As far as the day-to-day, -day, no, I don't get myself involved with that deal. Commissioner Servo. If the geofencing can be Solve that issue. I don't see any reason why they shouldn't be able to use their phones and do it just like everybody else. Frankly, it's an accountability issue, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you know, um, 
you got to trust them that they're going to clock in and be working for the county at six o'clock a.m. when they clock in, or you got to trust them to, to put the right information in when they fill it out. You have to have trust. Well, I trust them. I do, but and you have again, to have a checks and balances as far as the supervisor that knows how we can check to make sure that they're doing what's appropriate. This is part of the checks and balances. I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying that we. If you would like us to clock in, clock out, we'll adjust and, and go from there if that's what comes down. With it. I have to talk to the sheriff also, obviously, to get him understanding where this is coming from. But it's it's a trust system either way. I mean, I can clock in at six o'clock, and we've seen it at the state level where they sit at home for forty five minutes. What's the result of? They that? get in trouble once they get caught. Oh, okay. All right. I, I would like to see that. I think all hourly employees should be treated fairly. I agree there are exceptions, as there are uh, at every facility, but I think this is part of checks and balances. I think this is part of accountability. Um, I was under the understanding, and I apologize if I misunderstood, that that's the way things were already being handled. Um, that way, the overtime, in my opinion, can be watched closer. Um, that, that's, that's my opinion on it. So what, what's our next step? What do we do from here, Tim? There's no action for you to do at this point. Um, I can get with the sheriff if I need to, to figure out what has to happen. Uh, we may need to bring the conversation to the union, to make sure they're aware. There is nothing in the contract, obviously, that addresses no time. We didn't have it uh, when we were bargaining. So we'll sit down with the union representation as well and explain that this is how we're doing it. Take it from there. We got the legal opinion from the lawyer written, sent to us all. So my question is with that legal opinion, how's that not true for all of the other unions? Has there been a conversation related to this? Um, we really haven't had to have one. They, we just, it's been implemented and Correct. it happened. Uh, but this is clearly a change. And frankly, the unions were all aware too. I mean, we didn't keep them in the dark either. So, but this is a change that. We're just obligated to touch that base just to make sure that there's understanding. If there are questions, we can answer those. Uh, but it's uh, just a courtesy call, if nothing else. Okay, more to come on this? You have follow up? You can talk to the sheriff. If you, if you, they'll have to get with Nova Time help desk to change parameters as far as the sheriff's office if we go to the. For the individuals that do start from home? That'd be across the board because we have to implement the time clock system with clocking in, clocking out. It's there, but it's not being utilized. So we'd have to change rules for the way I understand it for the sheriff's office and the corrections department. So is the corrections that. department the corrections department is clocking in, correct? They're not clocking in either? No. No, when we set it up, no. the corrections and the sheriff's office were entering their own time. The employee enters their own time. But there's employees, that, and, and then I'll leave it alone, but I, I guess I, 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 do, I don't understand. If there's employees that are coming here to start their day, to, to start work, their radius should be very, very close to here. They're here to work. When they leave work, they're here to leave work. And so. with corrections, that's even more evident. I understand what you're saying, but we kept it universal across both departments. The sheriff's office, which is sheriff's office and corrections, Sheriff's office was manually entering. We did it with corrections too. So it was universal so that we didn't have two different systems. That was one of the things too. Well, I think we're talking on the same wavelength then because we're trying to do the same thing as you are, except we're trying to do it across the whole county. You're trying to do it across the whole county. Board. I right. understand that. Right. We weren't being deceptive or keeping, it was from the onset we okay. said. We're not saying you're deceptive. Well, we're I just agree. saying that we've kept you on board every step of the way okay well, yeah because we got to pay the employees right <laughs> right well we just want to pay them for the time that they're working item 7g claims who did claims i did claims commissioner uh myself and commissioner newbecker um uh it was a little higher but I looked over, I saw appropriations line, uh, Nova time, our annual fee was $9,000. Uh, 
the airport appropriation for the first half of this next fiscal year came in. That was almost $32,000. Our child care budget this month was 35,000, almost 36, but the biggest one was the state of Michigan. We had to pay them nearly $20,000. Uh, in county general, uh, we we're up over 10,000, but Maximus cost us 7,000. And Parks and Rec, we were able to get in the, the final payment on the fence program, and that was uh, $31,000. So. Yeah, I had a question about that, I guess, I, when I looked at that. Is that something, how come that didn't have to come to us for approval before that was purchased? Did, did I guess maybe I, I missed that as well. Did I not know about that? Is that something standard practice that you guys do? Well, we, I brought it up for discussion uh, all through the year, every time we talked about uh, reports. Uh, we, we did bid it out. The committee did bid it out. Um, we had, uh, I had, I asked the administrator to come in and talk to the committee about uh, the policies of the county about uh, 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 levels of uh, levels of bidding and 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 uh, those kind of things. So that uh, committee understood. So we did bid bid the process out. Maybe maybe we one what? step got missed. I, I don't I don't know. Oh, um, in in Commissioner uh, Scott mentioned this uh, several months ago at a meeting. Uh, I don't know when. Obviously, it predates me, but uh, the board gave the Parks Board a certain level of autonomy over their administration of the parks. And this is one of the issues that uh, I've been brought into a couple of uh, park committee meetings uh, to introduce them to county policies and say, you know. This is a bidding requirement, or this is a contract that needs approval and so on. One of those areas that's on my radar that I would like to bring back into the county fold a little bit more, uh, but right now there's that standing decision from, I don't know what year, that Parks Board would have the autonomy to proceed with these projects. So they did, in effect, follow the intent of the policies, but the way they operate, those decisions don't come here. They're operating like their own uh, I think they are their own fund, uh, a bit of autonomy. We can, we can change that anytime. It's, it's on the radar. Um, many other things, obviously, that we're working on too, but yeah, that's uh, yeah, something for further discussion. Just $31,000, $609 just looked like a lot of money, and I didn't recall the yeah, conversation. Yeah. Oh, no, but that is only the last payment. The total mm -hmm. the total cost of the project was over fifty thousand. Now that all that money came out of the parks and rec budget, right. nothing out of the general at all. So um, just part of communication. Well, that's why I brought it up in every report, you know, throughout the year. I mean, and myself and Commissioner Vaughn, we both sat on the board mm -hmm. on the committee. Um, but, you know, I mean, we can take that out. I mean, back, that was a couple of different commissions ago. And, and uh, when we were really bringing the Parks and Rec uh, committee back up to speed because they had been pretty stagnant for years. Uh, so we could change that process. I mean, we can do that today. I don't have an issue with that at all. I just think it needs to be maybe some further discussion. Can we put that on for a committee of the whole? Anything but, else on claims? But the biggest thing is that was all that was all taken care of money within the funds of the of the committee. I just want to make that clear. Uh, we didn't make uh, we didn't make any decision to pay that cost anything out of the general fund. Um, no, I don't, uh, nothing else on claims. I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve that at the sum. What's the sum? Yeah, we're right to uh, $240,454.02. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'll make that motion and we approve those claims. We have a motion from Commissioner Scott. Support. Support from Commissioner Bert Newbecker or Sir Brooks. Sorry. Any further discussion? 
Roll call vote. Andy David. Yes. Rick Scott. Yes. Mark Serbrook. Yes. Ron Vaughn. Yes. Um, any unfinished business? Commissioners? No, not I don't have it. Item nine, administrator's report. A few things I should remind everybody. We do have our new commissioner orientation scheduled for tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Uh, everyone here is uh, obviously welcome to attend as well. Uh, if you do attend, don't worry about Open Meetings Act obligations. Number one, you won't be deliberating toward anything. But number two, we did post a notice on our board uh, that uh, states that there may be a quorum of commissioners present. Uh, obviously, again, no uh, decisions to be made. Um, and clearly, you know, this is geared toward our uh, new incoming uh, commissioners. And we'll block out two hours and we'll get in as much as we can. Um, this morning, and I did send you an email, and you may not have uh, opened it up yet, but there was a political sign across the street at the annex that I pulled up. It's sitting in my office right now. Um, just uh, let the board know, the public, and everybody's listening, and I'll do an email blast to our employees this uh, this morning after the meeting. Uh, we don't put political advocacy signs on county property, uh, no matter how good or how uh, important that the issue might be, we just don't do that. Uh, number one, I mean, there are ethical concerns, but number two, frankly, we're jeopardizing even some federal grants if we do that. So we need to just uh, make sure that that doesn't happen. I'm sure the individual who did this was well-intended, but we simply cannot do this. So um, we, um, in follow-up to the report that Community Mental Health provided a couple of meetings ago, um, we have, um, materials here, I think it's the last item in the packet here, the flyer on the Carter Kit training. Uh, just to give you an update on that, there is a training going on for first responders uh, that looks like it's pretty much a full session right now. It's pretty tough to get our people mm -hmm. in there. So we're working on scheduling a training for uh, our county employees, but particularly targeting people like transit, where they have the buses that go around and, and sometimes the uh, 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 people that would benefit most from one of these Carter uh, kits is a uh, client of transit. So we uh, hope to get these kits on all the buses uh, as well. But any of our departments who are interested in the training on that are, will be invited to attend uh, as well. Uh, the item that I will uh, get into more detail at the Cal meeting next week. Uh, yesterday, uh, came across something called the Local Assistance and Tribal Consistency Fund Grant. Uh, this is an offshoot of the ARPA program at the federal level. Ogemaw County is uh, uh, scheduled to receive $50,000 for each fiscal year of 22 and 23, so $100,000 total. Uh, we'll talk about that in greater detail next week because obviously we'll need a resolution to accept that. It is um, it really looks like all the uh, uh, indications anyway are it's just another ARPA silo that we were eligible for. This is uh, pretty much unrestricted funds. Uh, looking at the requirements, it lists everything that we do, uh, including things like capital improvements and uh, revenue uh, replacement and, and so on. The only exception is we can't use it for lobbying. Well, our only lobbyist really is MAC and we won't give it to them. We can, I think, make that uh, commitment. So more about that next week, but that was, that was certainly good news. And then lastly, I got an email earlier this week, uh, like Monday or Tuesday from Mesa, uh, asking if I would participate in an employer advisory committee for Mesa and represent municipalities, which I readily accepted. So um, hopefully it'll give us even more insight about how uh, Mesa process works and to take advantage of some of the benefits they offer. That's it. And department head meeting. Did have a department head meeting on Monday. Um, I, Put the uh, call out to all the departments for tomorrow's meeting to give me a one-page synopsis of what their department does. That's a big challenge for departments to put all that on one page, but they'll also all uh, have been invited to attend the meeting tomorrow just to introduce themselves, <clears throat> uh, maybe give uh, what we call the you know, three-minute elevator speech. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of time, but that would be, uh, I think, a way for uh, new commissioners to meet the department heads they'll be working with. Um, what about our, did you want to give a brief, a brief summary of our meeting last Friday or no? 
meeting with oh, Gladwin I, County? I, I could. Um, <laughs> or, or, or you could even under the under your reports. But we did have a meeting at the invitation of Gladwin County just to meet our counterparts. So there was myself, the board chairs, vice chairs. Uh, we had a register of deeds attend with our clerk. Let's see somebody, I think that was our contingent. Mary went as well. All of our counterparts were there from Gladwin County. Uh, met over lunch and a lot of very good discussion. Um, I think what they're looking to us for is um, just sort of a, a guidance in terms of how we operate. They hired the county administrator late last year, as I recall, uh, and they're still trying to um, understand how that whole process <laughs> works. And so we were, I think, able to offer them some some thoughts and what our experiences were. And certainly, you know, for me, educational to, to uh, listen to what their experiences are as well. Uh, so I think a very good relationship. Probably going to try to do this quarterly uh, if we can pull it off. But I thought it was a very good meeting. And I think any of our neighboring counties that we could do this with, I think we'll all benefit from it. So, yeah, very good. And I think it's, uh, you know, just something that we can build on. Anything else? I, now, oops, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yes, I'll bring it up. No, I, I talked about training in the past. Um, and I talked about Dale Carnegie Academies in the past also. And we're coming into the, the winter, the, the dull months or whatever. But I'd really like to uh, venture and take a look at how we can help our department heads, elected officials, maybe with Dale Carnegie training or time management training, Excel training, uh, maybe Excel can expand it to, uh, to the employee side too. It, it has been done in, in certain departments by department, but maybe we can look at something to help people out. Uh, time management, I mean, I don't know how many people I'm talking to and they're telling me they're just pulled by, at so many ends and can't get anything done. Would, and yet we don't have anything that's so big here that I can't I you, can't understand why. Would you like to put this on the committee of the whole so for further discussion? Sure. I had asked you too about the wall of honor. You were going to touch base with LaDonna. Have you had the opportunity to do that yet? I did. They were uh, working out logistics with the people who prepare the pla uh, yeah, the plaques that you see on the wall. There was some confusion. Uh, to an earlier order, the plaques came back and they were nothing like what we have here. So LaDonna was working with another vendor uh, to prepare those. And that's what last I heard, and that was uh, what, a week and a half ago. Because we're two years back, right. we're two years backed up on that. Oh yeah. They're, try they're trying, they're, they're just, moving on. Just people know that we haven't forgotten. Yeah, yeah. Item 10, elected officials and department heads, clerk. Uh, Brett Gilden, the Ogemaw County Clerk. Um, just want to, again, um, the deadline for anybody that would like to file for a write-in for any um, any position on the ballot is October 28th. Um, absentee ballots are going out currently, so if anybody is interested in getting an absentee ballot, they need to reach out to their township clerk. Um, they can get that for them. Uh, and we are just in full election mode and busy managing our time well. Uh, clerk. Oh, today. Treasurer, I'm sorry. Come on up. Good morning, everyone. Good Karen morning. Kowalski, your Oklahoma County Treasurer. Um, Jenny, I think you skipped and the shirt description. No. What? We did get the agenda. Oh, because Mary and I thought you skipped it. No. Extension. I read the eighty, the item seven F. Okay. Ron made the motion. We, we passed it. Okay, we voted oh, it's on it. Yeah. Like, we voted on it. So I said, okay, I'll say something when I get up there. Um, financial reports reports are in your iPad. Did you have any questions on those items? Um, I, d I did, I guess. Well, hang on, let me pull it up. I was looking at it last night. And I, can you ex maybe ex the financial report you're talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah, your investments. Yes. You're astonished at the Michigan class interest income, $5,700, $7.02 just in the month of September. Yeah, I guess why, to me, it looks like some pretty significant changes. 
changes. What can you explain that? Like investing for interest income. Okay. Yes, I've done some money movement to create better interest income for you. And then with the September loan, just for Michigan class investments, 5,707.02, the record breaker in the, at least in my term of office, um, there's a receipt uh, sheet showing just your revolving fund investments. Um, I try to give you a visual as well as just a numerical. So it's, you have two different perspectives of viewing your investments, showing you maturity dates, the terms of investments, your interest rates, which are continuing to climb. Each individual fund that's invested, I'm showing your transit, where the ARPA funds are invested, the X reversion funds invested. Do you guys have any questions? I was just shocked. The uh, at the Mills Township meeting, though, the credit union came the other day, and and they they were discussing that three percent interest, and it's the highest it's been in years. Yes, yes, record breaking. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to mention too the Mihaf program that launched at the beginning of twenty twenty two. We have taken in just short of twenty four thousand dollars and sustained homeowners with their property taxes over multiple years from 2018 to 2021 taxes. So that's been a good program for our county, helpful to many homeowners. The October 4th community outreach at Mills Township sadly was not well attended. They said. I only had about 10 The community outreach program that I organized with um, several, several resources taking it to the township hall to try to reach the people that aren't able to come to the county building. Only about 10 people showed up, so. And I'm disappointed that there wasn't more activity or more people attending when we tried to get the resources out to them as close as we possibly could. So disappointed on that. Are you try it again? I think I would have to go door to door with the resources and literally knock on doors to get to get. Well, I just reach. wondered. And it was communi It was communicated. It was. I had it in the newspaper for two weeks. It was on the county website. I had papers everywhere. I, I don't know how else to get information out to people when we have so many resources to offer for home improvements and foreclosure prevention, but I'll continue to develop to network and develop I, I, ways to I get it. It's like there's programs out there for renters, yes. and I tell my renters all the time, and I just can't even get them to go on a computer and get free money. It's difficult. Yeah. To encourage them. Yeah. I'll keep trying. You know, I'll find I think if you try it again and ask instead of just advertising, ask for an interview with them and just get a, a, a news report from the paper. Mm -hmm. Not that people read she the paper. There, and she was she was there, took pictures, was gonna do a okay. story on it. All right. Plus great. they did a blurb, not just my advertising, but they also did a blurb right. in the paper pre pre um, date. You know, a lot of people listen to that Tawas, the radio station. Radio station? Uh, since our, ours here in the county is just playing recorded music anymore, but uh, a lot of people listen there, and I found out that they're putting they're putting a lot of our minute meetings or or uh, synopsis of minutes. They do all of the, our meetings on on, on their radio? on their radio station. All I, the neighboring town, uh, counties, they do. Oh, okay. Because I just don't listen to uh, Ottawa State. Maybe they'll okay, do a little in. story for you rather than advertise. I mean, right. do a story. Right. Well, thank you. Try. Thank you for the effort. Thank you. Thank you for thanking me. Yeah. Um, we had a land bank meeting yesterday, and um, our first property is now for sale. Uh, we're working with Tom shortly to get the advertising on our county website. Um, mm -hmm. The property is at 2408 First Street in Prescott, and it's just a few steps away from the beach, which if you've been in Tuma Skidway, they have a new plan to develop the beach area, create a better basketball play space for the kids. Um, so I think it's gonna have some great selling features. It's not far from the Book and Frog, which is a nice uh, remodeled venue. And um, our asking price is $9,900. Yay. Yay, we'll see how it goes. Um, I have a second round tax sale scheduled for October 28th. I have two properties up for sale. One is a dilapidated property in the village of Prescott. The other is approximately a 10 acre wooded parcel in Foster Township that has been purchased twice. And both times the, the purchasers backed out. All your, other right? all your other properties have sold. Have sold? Have sold. Yep. And when, the, when my final sale is finished, then I'll give you a report on dollars as to where we're at. 
do they give you a reason why they back out? They don't. It does cost them a thousand dollar penalty. So, right. so right. far, I had a our first round sale. We had what's called a reoffer sale, which was the um, the the Foster Township ten acre parcel was backed out on the first round sale. It was considered a reoffer on September twenty eighth. It was up to forty four thousand dollars in change, and then the person backed out after the sale. They were charged a thousand dollar penalty. It will now be part of the October twenty eighth second round sale. It's not a swamp acre. No, it's a nice wooded acre, like just short of ten acres of wooded property in Foster Township. And it's accessible. It has. It's as not as landlocked. I, or... I didn't go physically look at the property. Okay. I'm just looking at the photos that are posted. But it looks like a really it's nice property. By a road. Again, I haven't physically gone to look at the property. Okay. I'm just looking at. Thank the you. I know in the past, uh, properties out in Ogama Township in the in the water district had been sold had been sold on tax sales and they would back out because they were not aware of the tax the the water assessment. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, and you know what piece of property I'm talking about, it's the sure one I, I ultimately sure bought. I and mm -hmm. at that time it was fifteen thousand dollars a year for water assessment. Mm -hmm. And they bought it and then found out, oh. I got to pay fifteen thousand dollars a year in taxes, and they backed out. And the second, the second uh, bidder was offered, and they backed out. Yeah, the county ended up selling it for nine thousand dollars. Thank, thank you, yes, thank, thank you, you for your update. MSU, did you have something to add? Uh, well, first of all, thank you so much for uh, approving the agreement with MSU. Um, I didn't know that, but it was approved. So, uh, and you I, did or you didn't? I did. Absolutely. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. The motion was made by Commissioner Vaughn and seconded by Commissioner Vaughn. <laughs> all right. Please. Okay, um, Gary and I are asleep over here. <laughs> maybe it was just, it was very, it was very quick. So, and I was trying to catch your eye, um, Commissioner David, and say, yeah, I know that that happened. It was very fast. Um, last week, I was able to uh, come to the Committee of the Whole, but one thing that I failed to mention when I was meeting with you uh, for the Committee of the Whole was that last week was National 4-H Week, which is celebrated, obviously, across the country. Um, and I was able to send you all an email with a couple of videos featuring um, our 4-H programs, one of which is just a, a program for Ogemaw County that was developed by a, a youth who was interested in sharing his love of astronomy. Um, and he created, he's a teen, and he created a club with Enya um, for uh, middle school kids who were interested. And they had a great time. And if you haven't had a chance to see the video, I think it's about five minutes worth. Um, but you get to see kids talking about um, how they learned about um, astrophysics and, and visited um, the planetarium in Bay City um, and had a visit from um, planetary uh, scientists from Michigan State as well. So really <laughs> exciting. Um, and then there was another video uh, for Whittemore Prescott Area Schools. We have a separate agreement with Whittemore Prescott Area Schools um, to where we have a program instructor present um, uh, at, who's based in the elementary school, but who also uh, programs with um, kids there. And most of it's after school programming, but she has managed to get uh, a student council begun at the at the elementary school and uh, for the first time and also start a school newspaper um, and the kids are really um, learning a lot about what it means to have a story and they've interviewed the principal and things like that one of the articles was picked up by the herald so we're really excited about that impact that we're having there um, after the committee of the whole meeting um, i ran into a gentleman here who had a question about um, gypsy moth or spongy moth in, from Foster Township. I was able to connect him with one of our educators that works on forestry issues who's based in Ross Common County. Um, she was able to meet with him uh, earlier this week and talk about how they're basically creating their own spray maps for the township and doing their own scouting um, so that they can understand how they can best um, defeat this invasive pest. Um, and maintain their forest um, in the in the um, in the township, um, and we're really excited that we could make that connection. Um, 
this is the season when youth are, I'm sorry, I have notes on my phone as well, uh, when youth are enrolling for 4-H. Um, and so uh, people can sign up with uh, our office with Enya. Um, we also, at the beginning of the month, had an appreciation luncheon, uh, sort of an awards uh, ceremony luncheon with over 200 people coming together to celebrate the accomplishments of the 2021-2022 4-H season. Um, and currently we have, um, we're promoting 4-H college scholarships, which are available and the applications are due November 1st. And we have a couple of the Halloween events going on with 4-H as well. Um, Phil Durst, who's our senior educator for beef and dairy is um, also serving as the national president for the National Association of County Agricultural Agents. Um, and he is at a meeting this month in today in Tucson, um, but he's done amazing work uh, in the last month um, promoting um, the cheese industry in Michigan. Um, so every time you can add value to a dairy product, um, you're helping farmers make a little bit extra money. Um, so we're really working uh, collectively, but specifically Phil is working on more opportunities for cheese and being able to create uh, an opportunity for Northern uh, Michigan sheep producers by bringing in a specialist, um, hosting at a nearby farm. Um, and as a result of that meeting, uh, someone who is interested in raising sheep is going to buy some animals and raise sheep. And also uh, an existing sheep farmer is investing in a new shoot system that will help them inoculate their sheep in a safe manner. So um, we definitely see the tangible results of, of our work uh, here in the county and in the surrounding area. So we appreciate your support as always. And I was glad I could share that with all of you. Hope you'll check out, check out those videos because we're really proud of the effort. Thank you so much. Thank you. Tom? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Are you stick around? Pardon? Are you going to stick around? Yes, I'll stick I'd around. I'd like to talk to you. Okay, yeah. absolutely. Thank you. Also, um, I'll for the agreement, you had a strikeout. I will make sure that that version gets sent to uh, the university's corporation council for approval, and then I'll send it back to you for signature, just as a process note. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Tom? I just Morning. want to update you. I did have some headway on the GPSs. Uh, it's installed on one of the patrol cars right now. It hasn't been a uh, pleasurable experience working with this company that's based out overseas. And I emailed Iosco County right from where Commissioner Scott is sitting last week during the meeting, and I did not hear back. So I am not getting the communication back that I need to help move this forward. So I went ahead and just signed up for a trial basis. And that's where the one patrol car um, came about. I just installed it yesterday. I was able to get it installed. Um, I do have some preliminary pricing, though. It looks like it's going to be $4.00 per device per month. There's no long-term commit with, commitment with the company, but there is a 25 device minimum. Now, where my question comes in on that is, Iosco County specifically said that they do not want to monitor any of our non-patrol car vehicles. So I don't know if that can be segregated within the account mm -hmm. because like Ray has 14 buses alone. So I don't know if I'm gonna have to sign up for two separate accounts and the patrol car one gets transmitted to Iosco and the other account with the rest of our county vehicles doesn't. So I'm still working on the details of that, but. Um, Who did you try contacting at Iasco County? So they have a contract IT there. I, I Mike Eller is the director of 911 in Iasco County. And I reached out to him and it took a couple of weeks to get a hold of him. He was on vacation and whatnot. Um, I finally got a hold of him. He says, yeah, I talked to Adam. That's their contract IT. <laughs> so he's the one that I work with in the past for things at dispatch to connect dispatch to Iosco County. I haven't gotten, he sent me back out of three emails, one reply. It was uh, that meeting we were talking about with Vlad and they do the same thing. They contract their IT out and we all raved about so, how yeah. fantastic you are. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I actually, I don't know if, other than Ross Common, how many counties around us have an in-house IT. Uh, yeah. I know your net contracts are all, do you, do you know who Vlad would use? Was I don't think they said. Say. Um, but we just said what a blessing and an asset you were. Thank you. So, so I'm working on it. It's not going as fast as what I would like it to be. Um, and there's I'm 30 percent of this project pretty much <laughs> when it comes to the I'm a, I'm a third of it. So I Thank gotta you. rely on the other two thirds. Thanks for the update. No problem. Thank you. Do you have anything from the ORV or okay? Uh, any other department heads or elected officials on? <laughs> Did I see Jeff on the phone? Oh, on. Hi, Jeff. Oh, I Hang on just a second. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Yeah, I just wanted to give you an update. Uh, I want to thank Karen uh, for setting up the outreach. Uh, 
you know, yes, it was small, but hey, any any outreach that we can get to the community works. Um, secondly, my committee has selected an individual um, for a benefits counselor position. Uh, I got to just do up, uh, make notification to him or her, and uh, then set up, uh, see whether they're going to accept the position or not. Um, that should happen here pretty soon. I'm hoping today. Um, and then we're moving forward with the move over to the state police building. Uh, Tom has uh, got fiber optics coming in tomorrow uh, to get that set up. So that's one step. And then uh, we're, we'll work it from there. And hopefully maybe by uh, next month, we may be actually over in that building. Exciting. Any other department heads or elected officials on the phone? Uh, item 11, Manners from the floor. Any commissioners? Motions for adoption? 13 committee reports. Commissioner Serbuck. And did uh, Commissioner Newbecker and I met with the Sheriff's Office of Law Enforcement Committee. Um, discussion okay. of possibly moving to the annex building. We are in discussions about another option, perhaps. Um, Having the building actually built and lease it's exploratory. We're meeting with uh, the gentleman that erected the state police post here in West Branch, as well as the uh, Tri City post. We're meeting with him and his architect on the 18th in the annex building. So, exploring some possibilities there. Uh, District Health 2, Mr. Vaughn and I attended. Not much really happening. Uh, <laughs> monkey pox was brought up again. Um, you know, there's a vaccination for it. So I'm those interested. The information's on the District Health website. Attended West Branch City, um, Department of Health and Human Services. And again, I appreciate the reappointment of Sue Hearts to that board. Um, met with EMS. We are in contract negotiations currently with uh, EMS. I think we're probably going to have that wrapped up. We got another meeting next Wednesday, so I think we're going to have that negotiations probably wrapped up by Wednesday. We met with them yesterday um, for the first time officially, but I think we're real close and we're going to get that wrapped up. And I had West Branch Township last night. West Branch Township business as usual. So. That's it. Uh, Commissioner Scott. Um, I attended uh, Edwards and Horton Township meetings. Uh, they're, they're pretty much going over their stuff. Uh, uh, Edwards has uh, got a couple of blight issues and they're addressing them. Uh, almost ready to go to court here on one of them. And uh, They're both both talking, still talking with ARPA money, what what their ideas are. Uh, Foster Township, I wasn't able to make it. I sent uh, the report, my report to the clerk for their records. Uh, Parks and Rec, Commissioner Vaughn and I attended that, talked about the, the end of the uh, finalizing the, the, the fence project up. It's Deer Park. We talked about uh, just around some ideas about what it be in the in the uh, hall up there. Just uh, nothing particular yet. Uh, the, the condition of the roof is gonna. We're gonna have to take a look at it seriously. Look at it next <laughs> next spring um, for replacing the roof up there. Um, the RV park, looking at the end of the fiscal year, we're down a little bit over the fiscal year the year before, maybe 10% down on total revenue. Costs were up, but we're still within budget. Uh, 
but we did talk about some things that we're going to need in the spring. The last day of the park being open will be October 31st. So then, uh, uh, and we talked about some issues on seasonals and and preparing a new contract for seasonal campers. We allow 10, isn't it 10? Yeah. We allow 10 seasonal mm -hmm. campers a year. So um, that was all I had for, for committees this week or this, up, to, up to this point, so. Commissioner Vaughn. Uh, Mr. Scott pretty well handled the Parks and Rec that we attended. Uh, the district health meeting, one of the other things was they're looking at getting um, bids for a new roof on the building for district health. That was one of their main topics. Uh, met with the 911 board last night. Uh, one of the main topics was millage renewal. Um, I guess a lot of people are questioning because on the the um, how it's written up, it, it mentions the DDA and a lot of people are pretty excited about the DDA that what they don't understand is West Branch Township, Pokemon Township and the city of West Branch are the only entities that are collecting <laughs> for the DDAs. The other townships are not. And there's a misconception there that everybody's paying that and uh, they're getting quite a few phone calls. Uh, did approve their budget. I uh, give you a copy of their budget for okay. next year. Um, and other than that, I think that's all I had. It's been a busy two weeks. Uh, we had an insurance committee meeting. It was basically just uh, an update. Tim attended that along with Brad with me. Um, rates went up a little bit in the primarily the reason for that was the Tahoe's. The cost on the replacement of those, of course, is, is quite a, a bit more. But good news is, is other things went down. Um, accents went down. Lots of lots of things went in the right direction. But uh, overall, it was a good, pretty quick meeting. Um, anything I missed on that? Oh, very informative, though. And as the chair said, our, our rates on the auto went up because we added cars. So that's what happens. More expensive cars. Expensive cars. Yeah. Uh, we also talked to them a little bit about liability and, and will that, like with the GPS system was brought up, um, the body cams were brought up, um, implementing some policies and procedures was brought up if that would save us money um, with our insurance. And, and it sounded very positive with things that we were doing, um, at least talking about doing. Hardwood Lake, I had a Hardwood Lake board meeting this past week. That was a fairly quick meeting. They meet uh, twice a year. It was related to spraying the lake. Um, they were pretty happy with the outcome. Uh, they sprayed three times. Typically it's four, but they sprayed three times. They talked about the copper levels. Um, they have a biologist there. It's, it's quite informative. And, and there is a treatment plan that you can do to decrease the copper levels that lasts for quite a, a long period of time, but the cost is anywhere between a hundred to $200,000. And they have 100 residents on that lake. So they talked about sending a survey out with the uh, annual um, newsletter as far as if that's something that, say, they would like to collect a certain 100 or $200 over a five-year period to get enough money to, to pay for this treatment. So it's just discussion right now. They're talking about a survey to see what uh, residents would like. Uh, Village of Prescott, I attended that meeting. Ryan uh, Veter was there. Um, talking about a little bit about blight and, and the zoning and, and how them go hand in hand. And they had two properties that were our two residents that are definitely giving them uh, some hassle with the blight. So they also talked about their water treatment center a bit. Um, that's a very costly uh, treatment center for them. They need some upgrades, some clocks, some cards. I don't understand it all, but uh, talking about that a touch too. So there'll be more to come on that. Richland Township. Um, cemetery, they're having some, uh, I don't know what their, their, uh, titles are, but there's some newer people taking over the cemetery and trying to get everything documented where everything's at. Um, the person that was doing it has got some health issues and apparently has a lot of things stored in his brain. Um, and so they're trying to now get that put on paper. Um, so that way, uh, it's, it's documented and, and there won't be any problems going forward. Also, the library over there, um, there was a library meeting for uh, Richland, uh, mm -hmm. the Village Library, Mills Township Library, Rose City Library, uh, 
as we've known over the last two years, they've lost a lot of uh, monies and they are in uh, dire need and in, in danger of closing. Uh, Richland Township Board passed a motion to pay $10,000 per year for the next two years to keep the village library open. That will buy them enough time to put it on the ballot so then residents can make uh, the decision whether or not they want that library open. And they will just take a very small portion. It'll be a very small millage. They're gonna figure out exactly how much um, is needed. So Richland Township, they're gonna use ARPA funds. Um, that's $10,000 uh, over the next two years per year to keep that open. Uh, Mills Township, that was this past week. They are doing two, uh, uh, Treasure discussed, they are doing two playscapes. Um, one at the Skidway Lake. The other one is is the park of across from my office. Um, Lapham's have been, been involved in development there. Uh, it's very similar to what they have at Elbow Lake, Elbow Park there. Um, very nice, very expensive. Um, they're also talking about a new hall. The hall over there is in pretty rough shape. Um, the ordinance officer gave a report. Uh, one individual went to court this past week for some blight issues and our blight officer was very, very uh, positive and very um, uh, happy with, with how the judge uh, sided with this and what the plan is moving forward. So it sounds like that went very well. Uh, the library also came to Mills Township asking for $26,000. Um, they tabled it. Uh, quite a few residents were there um, in support of the library. The library over there is, is probably the biggest out of them three that I just talked about and, and is utilized the most. Um, there'll be more to come on that. They wanted uh, between twenty five dollars and $26,000. Uh, and they asked for any support. So uh, they table it. Again, a lot of residents were there and I'm sure there's gonna be more to come on that. I, I briefly discussed in my report, the High Banks property that was not on the agenda, nor was it part of the supervisor's report as far as discussion that, that you have had with uh, Mills Township. Um, I, I asked for an answer um, because we're gonna continue to talk about this. Um, they wanted to know why they should take liability for it. And my answer was, well, I don't think that the town, the county should keep this property when we're not maintaining it. Um, I also briefly said that you had talked to our insurance uh, and it falls under the umbrella of our other properties. And since they have other parks, um, you know, hopefully that same, same applies. Um, Again, it wasn't tabled. I don't know. I did ask them to please report back to you. Um, so I'm sure there'll be more to come on that. I said we were talking a dollar, but again, this is in your township. You guys have maintained this. We are not. Um, we are offering it to you guys first. So that's where that was left. Um, I would like that left on the committee of the whole for next, next uh, meeting as well. So we continue to discuss this. It was just kind of interesting getting feedback initially on why we're not maintaining the property, what we're doing with this property. And now I came back with an answer of what we're doing and that wasn't right either. So uh, EDC, there's an EDC uh, uh, I, I, uh, economic development on the 20th. So that's next week. The speaker is going to be, um, oh gosh, where's her name? Sarah Lucas, uh, related to rural development. It is at the Forwards Conference Center uh, between seven and nine. There will be breakfast served. I, I encourage people to attend. Um, also, I went to that Gladwin, Gladwin uh, collaboration. I, I really enjoyed that. Um, I really enjoyed meeting their board. I really enjoyed hearing uh, their concerns, their issues, and, and hopefully there'll be more to come with that with neighboring, neighboring uh, counties. So it was busy. I, I missed Logan. I did miss that one. Oh, darn. <laughs> um, any questions for me on any of that? I made that as quick as possible. Sorry. Two of, two of my townships have members on the, the library over here, and it, I hear the concerns every meeting. And and think what happened in our county was these libraries got pretty used to all the penal money coming in from from I-75 patrol cars 
And when that when that ceased, you know, they I don't think they went after a lot of fundraising during that period of time and they got comfortable living on it. Well, in in in, in contrast to that that has stopped over the last two years, which is when right. COVID hit as well. And then COVID too. So, I yeah. mean, I'm all in support of these libraries. Um, I have a lot of kids in my areas that that utilize a library for internet, um, that do some homeschooling. I, I am 100% in favor of these libraries. They did they did uh, ask about some county funding. Um, I did tell them that I, I, I would bring it back to you guys. Um, the good news is, is Richland again is giving it until they're able to take it to the voters. Um, which, in my opinion, was I agreed with that decision. Um, no, that would be on this. this no, not for two years. They've agreed to ten thousand dollars annually to keep the press, yeah. the village of Prescott, open. And, and internet is available. Uh, like Mill said, inter, they made internet available in the parking lot. So say it is after hours, but you can come and sit in the parking lot in your car and utilize their internet. They've got. You can check out hotspots from there. Correct. Um, yeah, I think they did. They did discuss that as well. I don't understand all of that, but I believe so. But the Mills Township also went into other things that they do. They do feedbacks or feed banks. They rent costumes. They rent prom dresses. I mean, that that especially that Mills Township Prescott too. It's right in the heart of of the town. Of the village. You know, um, dresses and yep. costumes. Yep. And do they take donations? I'm sure. I think that's how it's. Um, they they gave a report. It was brief the other night at Mills Township as far as how that operates. But yeah, um, I think that's they they drop them off and they rent them out and and they're trying to collect money and they're trying to help people. They do have one full time employee. Um, because I asked why their their income or, or excuse me expenditures was thirty one thousand dollars. They have one full time employee there. So, and they have a couple part time. So you know, obviously they're not making much money working there neither. So there'll be more to come on that. Um, you know, maybe we'll see how much is on the agenda, but that may be something that I would like your guys' opinion on as far as funding. I know we hit on it briefly. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, one thing I, uh, I've asked all the townships if, if they're talking about starting county MTA meetings back up, mm -hmm. that I know the prosecutor would like to address, address them uh, emergency management, like Bowers would like to talk with them and things like that, but nobody seems to have any idea if they're going to start it up or not. Oh, did you guys get a, uh, from Mike, and I'm sorry to be going back, or, uh, going backwards here, but I got a text from him yesterday. He got an award, the Emergency Management Professional of the Year, Mike Bowers, for Aranac, Ogama, Oscoda County 2022. We should definitely recognize that as well. He sent me that yesterday. Did you send that to you guys? I didn't, no, I didn't get it. Oh. Whoa, well, it's got to be true then. Don't know. It's on the internet. It is a plaque that he got. He should get recognized for that. Um, Emergency Management Professional of the Year. Population uh, is on there, presented to Mike Mike Bowers. So congratulations. I sent him a congratulations. Is it on, is what Facebook on like a emergency manager? Uh, it's personal. I oh, mean. I don't know. We're not friends. <laughs> Go ahead and make a motion. Make a motion to. Uh, we don't need a motion for that. Take recognize. To, to, to we can do up a resolution. Do, do a resolution. Let's do up a resolution in recognition of it. Right. Yeah. For the next. Big deal. Well, we don't need anything. Yeah. Yeah. I assumed he said it's all of us. First, I heard it too. We'll I said a that. clap and a congratulation. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I'm I'm saying make an official to uh, approve a resolution. Perfect. Right now, and you can write it. Afterwards, right? Whatever I want. No, I'd but rather. <laughs> I'd rather personally. I would rather have a well-written resolution and we can read it out loud. So let's give them that recognition next time. I'll forward you that plaque. Okay. Okay. Uh, item. Are we, we good? Fourteen general public comment. Sure. This is any any agenda item. Would you like to come on up? This is public comment. Yep. I did three minutes. Any any subject matter. I want to ask you a question. You mentioned something about the deer park earlier, about changing something. No, the deer park, it was a fencing. The cost was on our claims. Um, part of the fencing project, a $31,000 bill. But didn't the parks and rec pay for that? Yes. Yes, yes. It came yes out my question rec. was, was just as there's, there's a policy, if there was a policy or what the policy was, um, as far as cost, if the commissioners had to approve a, a high cost like that. 
Okay, let me tell you what the agreement was. Let me tell you what the deer park was like before. People like me and a couple other people that go around and beg people to donate hay so we can feed the deer. In fact, we thought we we're going to have to kill all the deer and close that deer park. It was so bad. So I changed, I became chairman. I changed the uh, meetings to be 12 months out of the year instead of like eight months out of the year. And uh, because of this, the old, uh, the old, uh, we managed to get the old members of the Deer Park, Parks of Rec, to retire. And as I got them to retire, I asked Craig, and he did a wonderful job getting new members on that board. And what's happened with that board, and, and the agreement was, they did all the fundraising because the board, they were broke. And when we found out that the RV park was financing the deer park too, now that's stopped, right? That is stopped. Yeah. The deer park now is self-sufficient. And uh, the agreement was, if the board was going to raise the money, that they're gonna do with the money, what they want to do with the money at the <laughs> deer park to improve it. And that has worked out very, very well. So, I mean, the house has been revamped. Um, board members painted it. This is a working board. This board went out there and cleared all those trees so they could put that fencing up. That board went out there and redid that house out there so we'd have a resident that would stay in that house. That house was terrible, broken windows. It was, I can't tell you how bad it was. Uh, the board got someone to drill the water out there, water well out there for free, except they had to pay for the materials, but the water well driller drilled that well for free. So what I'm saying is this is this is a working board. They raise all their own funds. They have they have grant writers. They have done a great job. The board members that are on there that Craig got are really, really good. We just wanted to make sure that we're following the policies and procedures because we changed a few things over the last year or two. And right. we definitely are. So we just wanted to make sure again, seeing that cost of thirty-one thousand dollars that we weren't supposed to be doing a resolution to approve that before we actually approve claims. Okay, the agreement was with with the commissioners and the board is that you leave your hand off their hands off their money, and they can do with it what they want to fix to fix that deer park up to fix up parks and rec. And that includes the RV park. So, yes. like they said, they're writing their own grants and stuff. That was the agreement. But I think if the commissioners try to step in, to tell no. them what to do with their money. I don't think that was intention at all. I think it was just communication and knowledge. I, I know I don't I don't think the intention at all was. No, no, no. I think it's just walk. communication I mean, and knowledge hard working board. and making sure we're doing everything the way we're supposed to be. Okay. No, I don't think that was- That guy right there could tell you everything's going on. Yeah. Thank you. That's all, yeah. Thank you for your time. Just, and, just and, to let you know, we have found out since, since Mr. Dolahan has come on board, we found out that the county has been doing a lot of different functions and not in the tune of the law. <laughs> I, I understand what you said. And, and we've had to change a lot of the ways that things were happening and like bidding structures and Wait. stuff like that. And so you're talking about the process, not the correct. Process. There is a better right. terminology, 100 percent making sure we the process not, correctly. Yes. Right. All right. Right. Because I would hate to see this wonderful board that's done so much with parks of rest. Yeah, no, no, no. That's not the intention. Because you're trying to control them. Thank you. That. Any other public comment? Oh my gosh, come on up, sir. Dan Domzalski, Foster Township. First of all, I want to thank this Julie behind me because I'm the one of the guys that got lined up to meet the other Julie in uh, Ross Common. And we got a very good education about what to look for this coming year for the gypsy, well, the spongy blocks. Can't use gypsy blocks. <laughs> We're not changing our accounts. Um, we have some homework to do. We were told how we got to go out and analyze if the cocoons are on the trees per square footage, per acreage, whatever. You got to give us a little bit of insight what to predict possibly for this coming year. We also got some good information on other sprayers besides the ones that we used. Um, and that guy uses a, a plane besides the helicopter we used. So it was a very good meeting. And I want to thank this Julie for starting it out and the other Julie, phenomenal. And once we, get our committee to get our information for our properties. 
the other Julie will come back out and speak to us. And Dave Ball is our chairman for our committee, but um, we have these, nobody's concerned about it right now, but we have to be concerned early enough so we can line this up. Because um, one of the things was trying to get the cost. Uh, it can't get the cost unless, you know, we know what we're gonna spray. Last year, we sprayed over 600 acres out of 2,000 some, um, which was pretty good. Uh, we're, we, we need to know what we're going to do for this year. So that's that's why we had a meeting last Tuesday. And like I said, it was a very, very good meeting. You know, she really knows her stuff. Good. I also, had, I also asked her about these little worms they have creeping right now. She told me those are oak worms and they're eating the leaves. Uh, she says they won't be bad, but at least I got my answer for that too. So appreciated the, the meeting. Like I said, it was very good. good. Thank you. It's nice to hear. Yep. And thank you for speaking and coming to our meetings. No problem. Any other public comment? Any public comment on the phone? Oh. <laughs> Did she make it through all the meeting? There she is. Any, any public comment on the phone? We have a closed good, session. Good meeting. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> She's great. <laughs> Uh, we have a closed session after this, and there'll be no other business will be discussed upon conclusion of the closed session. So I need a motion if someone wants to read this closed session. Oh, where is it at here? Item 15, item one. I've got to get to it. You want me to read it? Go ahead. To consult with the county attorney regarding pending litigations in the matter of Kerry and Glenn Gutierrez versus County of Ogema. Pursuit to Section 81E of the Open Meetings Act being MCL 15.2681E. I'll support. I'll make the motion. I thought that was all the motion. Yeah. Uh, can I get a roll call vote on that? Uh, yes. Scott. Yes. Mark Serbrock. Yes. Ron Vaughn. Jenny David. Yes. We have a motion to go into closed session at 1026. Give me two minutes. Uh, Are you taking a break or no? I ask because you're the one that usually wants to take a break. Okay, I'll have one. Well, I think. Oh, right. They're done. Thanks, no, 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 you were fine. All right. You think what? Oh. What was the last place you said you attended? Nine or North. Nine or North. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Oh, last night. I got my belongings. Call yeah, I'll give you a break. Make a motion we we'll go back into open session. Or we have a motion of support to go back into open session at, at uh, 1044. Can I get a roll call vote? Mark Starbuck. Yes. Brown Vaughn? Yes. David? Yes. Mark Scott. Yes. Motion to adjourn. I have a motion to, to adjourn with support. Support. All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned at 10. Thank you. To support that. Thanks, everybody, for being on. Hi, Jim. Bye. Bye, guys. Have a good day. Bye. You too. Yeah.